So next, we are going into the Time Lord sin. <laughs> I have actually not looked at these Time Lord's effects yet. And so um, it's definitely going to be interesting uh, for me to see what exactly the Time Lords have in store for us this year. Especially when last year they had like that whole gimmicky combo with uh, Obliterate and the uh, Cyber Cyber Angel Field Spell. So uh, yeah, let's see how many Time Lords we got. One, we got two, three, four, five... Oh, that's the one on the cover. And then I know this one's a Time Lord support, so one trap, two traps, three traps, and then that's it. All right. So just eight Time Lord cards. Shouldn't be too bad. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. So Mikion the Time Lord. Mikion. Mikion. Cannot be special summoned from the deck. If you control no monsters, you can normal summon this card without tributing. Cannot be a show by battle or by card effects. Normal Time Lord stuff. So I'm just going to skip that that part of the effect for every um, Time Lord. You take no battle damage from attacks involving this card at the end of the battle phase. If this card battled, have your opponent's life points. Okay. It just halves your opponent's life points. So, And then once per turn, you're your face, shuffle this card into the deck. So there's a lot of just normal Time Lord stuff on this card. And then, you know, pretty much what you're looking for is kind of like the Gladiator Beast effect where after it battles at the end of the battle phase, what's really happening. So this one halves your opponent's life points. So I guess if you're trying to get a little burn, a little stun type of Time Lord deck, you know, you definitely can make it happen. There's there's one that burns and then there's one that like inflicts 2,000 or that inflicts 1,000 every time your opponent draws a card, I think. So next we got Hail on the Time Lord. Uh, I got, got a little cute face on it too. Um, Again, yeah, special from deck, normal summon without tributing. Can't be destroyed. Take no battle damage. And at the end of battle phase, this card battled. If your opponent's, if your life points is lower than your opponent's, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the difference. So you know if you're at a you know a little deficit, you kind of like even the playing field. That's pretty much all all this one does. Okay, we got Raffi on the Time Lord, um, with more anime faces on giant mechs or whatever. Um, so. No special one from the deck. No monsters. Normal summon without tributing. Can't be destroyed. Can't be destroyed. Um, take no battle damage. At the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of one face-up monster your opponent controls. That battle that this card that this turn. So, if it battles, and then at the end of the battle phase, that monster that it battled is still on the field, you get to inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of their monster and it doesn't have to target the monster i think is nice you just like hey you battle me you take the damage <laughs> that's that's really it um so i i guess i guess that's cool uh next we have gabrion the time lord um this is a real salt salty looking face up there um definitely a ni one of the nicest looking time lords though uh can't be special from the deck no monsters normal summon about tributing can't be destroyed can't be destroyed uh, take no battle damage uh, at the battle phase. If this card battled, shuffle as many cards as your opponent controls into the deck as possible, and then they draw cards equal to the number of cards returned to the deck. So if you droll and lockbird them, or if you have like that, I forgot that uh, pr protector of the uh, something uh, where they can't draw cards like at all, or even if you like dark law them or something, I don't know. Um. I don't know. I, I guess it works like uh, kind of better against uh, extra deck monsters, like uh, with UA turnover tactics as well. Um, it's like it's a card that like says, "Hey, you shuffle into the deck. Like everything on the field gets shuffled, but you only draw based on what goes into the main deck. So um, if you have a lot of, if they have like three or four link monsters, and then one one other like speller trap, the speller trap goes back into the deck, and then they shuffle." They only get to draw one card because only the spell and trap card went back to the main deck. The other four link monsters or extra deck monsters went back to the extra deck. You know, not not including pendulums because pendulums would also go back into the main deck. But it, it's it's okay. It's more like a anti extra deck type of thing. But um, definitely nothing too crazy here. Uh, and then next and last one we have the sand the ion sand sand sand, sand ion. Sand Ion, the Time Lord. Um, definitely, definitely cheesing it up there. Got that, got that bison smell. Those, those pearls. Um, so if, if your opponent controls a monster, you can normal summon this card without tributing. 
Okay, so it has a different effect from Nutter Time Lords. It definitely has more attack as well. Just notice that. You got that 4K down there, 4K resolution, 10, <laughs> 120 frames per second. Um, so, cannot be destroyed by Battle by Card Effects. Uh, neither player takes battle damage. Well, that, that kind of sucks. At the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, inflict 2,000 damage to your opponent. And once return during your standby phase, shovel this card into the deck. Hmm. Eh, not, not the worst effect. I mean, you can kind of just run this in like any deck, honestly. If you just need, if you're just looking for like generic, like a, a generic card that could just like hit over monsters, um, since this card can't be destroyed by battle by card effects, like if if towers ever becomes a, a thing again, like just summon out sand, sand eye on the time lord, and just attack over the towers. And it just says, oh, if only your opponent controls a monster. So that means if, you, if they control a monster, then you don't. It's it's a little weird wording. Like they can't just keep the wording the same for all cards that do the same thing. Like if your opponent controls a monster, then you don't. They they can just write that, but I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, no, none of these time lords are like groundbreaking stuff. Like the stuff we got uh, last set. Um, I I still feel like uh, the Earth time lord we got last time, and then the water one are are two of the best time lords that we've gotten ever. So the water since the water one shuffles all your opponent's bond trap cards back into the deck and then they can't really chain to it and then oh no they can chain to it but it just shuffles all their spawn trap cards back into the deck and then um the earth one shuffles any card back into the deck and your opponent can't chain to it and they take 500 um that was the one from last year but uh, I, I still think those two are the best. I don't think any of these just live up to, to those two. But, you know, now the Time Lord archetype is here and arrived. So if you are like something like a Doctor Who fan and just says, oh, look, Time Lords, it might be a pickup for you. But, eh. So next we have non existence. If this card is the first time this card would be destroyed by an opponent's card effect, it is not destroyed. Once per turn, you activate one of these effects. Discard one level 10 monster, draw one card. Oh, look at that. Draw power. And then if you control no cards in your spell and trap card zones, no other cards in your spell and trap card zones, target one time monster in your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck, then you can set one endless emptiness from your deck directly from your hand or deck to your spell and trap card zone. Definitely, you would definitely set it from your deck, but you know, in case it's in your hand, I guess you can also set it from there. I mean, why wouldn't you just set it on your turn? That's the real question. So endless emptiness, you could activate this card by sending one face up non-existent in your spell and trap card zone to the graveyard, so you so you know one has to you know lead into the other it's kind of like um i i, I forgot what those cards are so I'm, I'm just not even gonna mention it um so but you know you have to you know uh level this thing up pretty much so you have to start one so this level one is this is like level two of the trap card and so the first time this card will be destroyed by an opponent's card effect this turn it is not destroyed it is does uh non-existence say that yeah it does yeah, it's, they, they both kind of have that little seal of Oricacos uh, pr protection clause on them. So, um, once we're trying to activate one of these effects, drain the main phase special from one Time Lord from your hand. What did non-existence do? I'm sorry. Yeah, so non-existence is draw power. This one is uh, special summon from the hand. Yeah, they can, spe they can be special summon from the hand. There's there's no need to say ignoring summoning the condition. And then target one Time Lord monster in the grave shelf from the deck, then you can sell one infinite light from your directly from your uh, hand or deck to your spawn trap card zone. And so infinite light, you activate it by sending uh, endless emptiness and it cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects in general. So it's just, hey, you're just not destroying me. Just just send me to the graveyard, shuffle me back, but you're not destroying me. Neither player can target Time Lord Monster to control of card effects. Okay, so now Time Lords can't be targeted either. And then neither player can return Time Lord Monsters on a field to the deck. Oh, okay, so Time Lords stay on the field now, which uh, I don't know how I feel about that, but it might be easier for them to build up a board. But I, I do think if you're playing Time Lords, you should be playing the Supreme King, um, Dragon Worm, uh, Pendulum Engine anyway. So I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. And once we're done, if you control no monsters, you can special summon Time Lord monsters with different names. Up to one each from your deck, hand, and or graveyard, ignoring their summoning conditions. What? So, I mean, even if you don't have any in your hand, you could just summon out one from your deck and one from your graveyard, ignoring summoning conditions just once per turn. 
and then they won't go back into the deck. You could either make a rank 10, uh, that rail cannon thing that inflicts 2,000, or even that one that, um, you know, is like a Felgrand, that, that rank 10 train monster is like a Felgrand. So, yeah, it's pretty cool stuff here they got here. So, I guess uh, Time Lords, they can kind of still, like, they can kind of be considered their own archetype now. You know, it's, it's not like a sub archetype. Where they only have like a few cards themselves. Like they're they're a full blown archetype now. They have ten monsters. They have a good no number of spell and traps, and there's uh, definitely going to be more ways to play the deck. But I don't think this is going to be like one of those big, um, you know, meta decks. It's just going to be one of those decks that are just around, kind of just like there under the radar. I don't even think it's like fast enough to be or consistent enough to be considered rogue. But um, you definitely give this deck a chance. Um. <laughs>